There are 29 animal orbs in Castle Crashers. Each one has a unique ability and today we'll be tier listing them. Right, let's begin. So for our very first animal, we are going to be doing Giraffe. Now Giraffe gives a XP bonus of 1.1 XP per hit instead of the normal 1 XP per hit. So this makes Giraffe quite a useful pet for the beginning part of the game where you don't really need the help from the other pets and just more XP is better. So with that being said, I think it's only fair to place Giraffe at a solid C tier. He's just middle lane. Now for our next pet, we'll be looking at Snailbert. Snailbert gives a plus 5 to your defense but a massive minus 5 to your agility. Now personally, I think it's a well worth it trade off because in Castle Crashers I'm going to be using either juggling or magic. I'm not really going to be prioritizing my bow and arrow. And a plus five to your defense is just huge. So for that reason, Snowbird will be going in S tier. Now, next is Zebra or Zebra if you're American. And yet again, he's not really great. He finds food in long grass for you, which can be useful. But there's many other animals on this tier list that all involve different things with food and not every level will have grass so he is not really useful in every single level so for that reason i think zebra has to be a d tier moving on to meowbert now meowbert gives a plus four to your agility stat with no drawback so there are a few of the animals in this list that do just give you a increase to a certain stat and it can be useful depending on how you want to play the game considering it's a plus four to your agility and there's no drawback which is a very big increase he's at least going to be a tier because he's not as good as some of the other characters Characters, but it's still a very good buff. Next is going to be Pazzo, and here is the first animal in this list where it's kind of situational. So Pazzo here will help you find hidden buried items that you can not normally find on your own, but that's pretty much it. So he's got a very specific use, but once you've used him, you're never really going to use him again. So for that reason, I think he just has to be D tier because you can't really put him in C tier with Giraffe because Giraffe does at least have a long term permanent use. But but Pazzo is one of the one and done pets. So next is going to be Burly Bear who gives you a plus three to your strength stat and a plus one to your defense stat. Now that is really good because there's no negatives and it's a pretty good upgrade. Now this one is going to be a bit controversial but I'm going to put Burly Bear in the A tier. He does definitely have the potential to be S tier in other people's lists but for mine he's going to remain in the A tier. So next is my favorite number one pet in Castle Crashers and that is Hawkster. Now Hawkster if you look at what he did in game sounds very bad on the board it just says he attacks fallen enemies and when he does so he does like one damage but no no he actually has a ability which isn't mentioned within the game itself and that is when you defeat an enemy he will go and grab a fruit from their dead body and bring it to you so that means that pretty much throughout a level you'll constantly have healing every time you defeat an enemy so for me hawkster is just an easy s tier this is why zebra and some of the other animals that we'll see later on that involve fruit just won't be as good because when you have hawks to here they just don't compare next is going to be snoot and i think pretty much 99 percent of the castle crashers community agree with me here but snoot's an easy s tier so snoot will give you a plus four to your strength stat with no drawback which is huge so we've got another fruit animal but this one's actually pretty good and that is piggy who will give you more healing per fruit item so this means that whenever you pick up any sort of healing you'll get more health than you normally would have plus he makes a little pig sound whenever he does it so extra points for cuteness i'm gonna put piggy in the b tier because once again i'd rather have hawkster but he's definitely not a bad pick now next is spiny and this is going to be yet again another controversial pick and that is because spiny will give you a plus four to your defense stat with no drawbacks this means if you're looking for a high defense pet without having any negative then spiny is definitely your go-to however i am going to put spiny at an a tier although he's very deserving of an s tier with snailbert being just one defense more i just can't see him being on that level next is cardinal and just like pazzo it's a another one and done kind of pet so cardinal will allow you to get secret items that you cannot get in the game without them making him very useful for getting a lot of weapons and even another pet in this tier list but once again once you've gotten the weapons and pretty much all the secret items you'd never need him again so i actually am going to place cardinal at a c tier just above pazzo because without cardinal you can't get a very good s tier pet for our next pet we'll be doing the beholder since the cardinal and beholder are kind 
mana two birds with one stone. Now the Beholder itself will give you a plus four to your magic stat with no drawbacks, making it once again a very easy S tier pet. On characters such as the Industrialist, the Beholder can become very useful for melting bosses. Our next animal on this list is Scratch Paw. Now Scratch Paw will give you a plus one to your strength and a plus two to your agility stats, making it so you do slightly a bit more damage and run slightly a bit more faster as well as have better arrows. But that's the problem with Scratch Paw, everything is just slight because I'd rather just have a flat strength boost or agility boost which I can do with either Snoot or Meowbert. Which for me means that Scratch Paw will be a C tier. He's not terrible but he's not great so he's kind of just average. Moving on now to our first probably terrible pet in the game and that is Seahorse. And they say that because his only ability is allowing you to move through water faster than normal. But the problem is there's only like two levels that have water in it, making Seahorse our very first F tier. So next is going to be the chicken character which has a very funny design and is based off the Behemoth's logo, the people who made Castle Crashers. So you'd think that he would have a pretty good ability. And and he kind of does, giving you a plus one to strength, defense, and agility. So Chicken is definitely one of the most versatile pets as he gives you a buff in multiple stats. But similar to Scratch Paw, plus one in everything isn't as good as just going all into one thing. But that's just me though. Let me know how you guys would determine this. So like Scratch Paw, I'm going to put Chicken in the C tier. Next is going to be... <laughs> oh god... It's going to be in Star Ball. Now, anyone who has played Castle Crashers knows that this thing is just a massive meme in the community. I don't know what its purpose is, but essentially, Install Ball will shoot a ball of energy at enemies every now and then, which sounds pretty good until you realize it does about six damage. Yeah, it doesn't scale and has really terrible damage. Plus there are other pets in the game that also shoot and do a lot more damage. So install ball is gonna be a very easy F tier and I don't think anyone can really disagree with that one. Mr. Buddy is going to be our next animal here. And what Mr. Buddy does is decreases the amount of time it takes to dig up dig spots and that's it so the one really real use i can see from mr buddy is in the desert section where there's a lot of dig spots but that's about it he only really saves you like two seconds per dig spot not amazing but not as bad as seahorse or the install bowl so i'm gonna put mr buddy in d tier and next is going to be sherbert who similar to mr buddy has just one kind of useless ability and that is that sherbert will allow Allow you to jump slightly higher that's it you can just jump higher now this can be useful for some of the flying bosses especially the final boss of the game when he goes into his little flying forms but with that being said every character in the game gets a jump magic which allows you to jump higher than sherbert so for that reason sherbert is going to have to go in f tier now next we're going to be looking at probably one of the cutest pets in the game and that is going to be pelter now pelter like install ball will shoot at enemies randomly but this time he actually does some decent and damage but there are still some drawbacks one being that he seems to only attack enemies when you hit them and the problem with that is most of the time you're going to be juggling the enemies making it very easy for sherbert to miss his snowball which makes pelter better than install ball but still not great overall so for that reason i'm gonna have to put pelter in the d tier now alongside pelter is dragon head who is the exact same as pelter but instead of snowballs dragon head will shoot fireballs however dragon head can set enemies on fire and do some additional damage but I don't know if it's just me but during my testing dragon head seemed to fire a lot less and also be a lot less accurate than pelter so I'm not sure if that's just me or not but dragon head is also going to go in D tier next to pelter because they're not really better than each other they're just kind of meh. Next is going to be for the PC version the DLC pet and that is going to be the golden whale. Now I'm going to say that this is pretty controversial but I'm 
going to put Golden Whale at S tier. This is because Golden Whale has two abilities. The first one and more useless one is he will occasionally drop a single blue coin which will give you one gold. So it's pretty useless but his second ability is he will have a 1 in 5 chance for a coin drop off of an enemy to turn into a random gem. And this includes the gold that drops from chests from some bosses. This means when farming gold such as the Barbarian boss, Golden Whale is actually a really good pick as it can speed up how much gold you get per run. And well there's no other pet like him so for that it's an S tier. Next is going to be a classic to Castle Crashers and that is Rami. And what Rami does is he will occasionally ram into enemies and knock them down. But on top of that if you just have Rami following you when you're walking around he can actually knock down enemies that just walk into him. So for that I'm going to put Rami in the B tier. Maybe a bit controversial? Let me know in the comments. Next is going to be Froglet who I think most of the community can agree is pretty useless and all he does is pick things up with his tongue so it can be pretty much anything that can be dropped on the floor so weapons or food and that's it. I mean all your character has to do is run over and pick it up so I don't really see why anyone would run Froglet and for that alone Froglet is an F tier. Next is going to be Monkey Face who increases your luck within the game. This pretty much means that anything that requires RNG to get to drop such as some weapons from enemies will have a better chance to drop. So Monkey Face makes things such as 100% in the game or getting every weapons a lot faster and easier and for that reason I'm going to put Monkey Face at a B tier. Now this is probably going to be the most controversial placing of this entire video and that is going to be Bipolar Bear. Bipolar Bear will finish off both enemies and allies that are near death making him a bit of a risky pet to use in multiplayer scenarios. But for single player, there is no negative. However, I don't think he's that good. In all of Castle Crashers, I would definitely make an argument to say he is the most overrated animal orb in the game. And that is because, well, if the enemy is one shot, they're one shot. Just finish them. There is one area of the game that Bipolar Bear shines in, and that is the painter boss fight. And that is because near the end of the fight, when he spawns in loads of paintings, he can go around and instantly kill all of them, making it an extremely easy boss fight. But outside of that, I don't really see Bipolar Bear having a use. I would once again rather just have Snoot to give me the damage increase killing the enemies faster. And for that, Bipolar Bear is going to go in D tier. I told you it was going to be a controversial one. Let me know in the comments. Next is going to be Bitey Bat, and I think most of the community can probably agree that it's not too good. So what Bat does is it will latch onto the head of enemies, making it so they can't attack or move, but it only really lasts a second or two and doesn't do any real damage. Plus, it can only do it to one enemy at a time, and most of the time you're probably getting swarmed. And with pets like Rami being able to take down groups of enemies and deal a little bit of damage, it just doesn't compare. And for that reason, reason I'm going to put Bitey Bat in the F tier. Next is going to be Yeti who has an extremely useful ability but can only be used in one point of the game. So what Yeti does is makes it so your character can not be frozen. An extremely useful and almost essential thing to have during the Ice King boss fight as during that fight you're pretty much getting frozen all the time. So being able to completely negate being frozen, it makes the fight trivial. But outside of that, Yeti just doesn't have a use. So he's a bit of an awkward one because he's extremely useful, but in just a very small portion of the game. So I'm going to put Yeti at the A tier, which I know could be quite controversial, but where he is useful, he is extremely useful. Next is going to be the Troll Pet, who will slowly regenerate your health over time, and that's pretty much it. He can be found very early on in the game, but the second you unlock any other character that can heal you better, you're going to switch out. So the Troll Pet is simply going to be a D tier, because he definitely does have usefulness, but just not as good as the other ones. And we will finally wrap up this tier list with Owlet. Owlet is the first pet you find in a fresh Castle Crashers playthrough and is there more as an introduction to animal orbs to begin with. So what Owlet does is it will find fruit in nearby trees and bring it to you. The problem is it has to be specific trees in specific maps, meaning it's pretty much useless in 90% of the game. And for that reason, Owlet is going to be our last F tier. And that is it. Every single animal orb in Castle Crashers ranked. So let me know how I did.
Do you agree with the list or do you disagree? And definitely let me know about the more controversial picks. I want to know what you guys think about that. But that is my opinions on every single pet in Castle Crushers. And before the video ends, I just had to give a massive thank you to everyone seen in the S tier here. Thank you every single one of you for supporting my channel. You're honestly such amazing people and I cannot thank you enough. But thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.